um, Congressman, um, I appreciate that that you um, really do care about about fixing the system. That that is clear to all of us that that um, costs must be must be reined in, and and that we have to do this soon because, as as you said, these are the costs are going up in a way that we will not be able to maintain. So what I want to know is, because um, your Patients' Choice Act will probably not be voted on um, on the House floor, is um, what can you do to work with House Democrats yeah. so that we do get a good plan? Because what we do want, in spite of the fact that many of us disagree, we want a good plan that will be able to sustain. And how can you do that in your position? Uh, work with your colleagues in uh, Congress to make sure that we get a plan that works for all of us. That's what, that's, you know, what I really believe is scrap this bill, start over. Mm -hmm. start talking. I have tried to approach so many Democrats this year. I've been, I'm still trying to get a meeting with the Blue Dogs. I've been unable to um, get that meeting um, to walk them through some of our ideas. Um, I introduced this bill with a couple senators, so it's a bicameral bill, which really tries to attempt to find what's working and improve upon it. That's what My Patient's Choice Act does. Um, what they tell us, the actuaries and the, you know, the, the CBO guys tell us, is it actually does bend the cost curve. It actually lowers health inflation. And it actually gets people insured who don't have insurance. And I do think you've got to have an answer for the people with pre-existing conditions. You know, if you had breast cancer eight, ten years ago, good luck getting insurance. You know, you've got to have a, an answer for that. You know, I've come up with a, with a way to do that. I think it's the best way to do it, but there's plenty of room for compromise. The problem is right now, and look, I'm a Republican, Democrats run Congress, I'm not trying to be partisan here, but they have all the power, all the control. And so it's their choice as to whether or not they want to collaborate with the minority or not. They have chosen not to collaborate with the majority, uh, with the minority. I've spoken to the chairman of my committee a number of times, a guy named Charlie Ringel. They are not interested. <laughs> in, well, I'm not trying. So you know who he is. Then. <laughs> they are not. You know, they're just. They're not in the mode or in the, in, in the mood to to compromise and collaborate right now. So. This has got to be scrapped for us to get to that kind of cooperation and collaboration. I really hope that we can still do that. The fact that I put out a very comprehensive bill tells you I feel I feel I owe it to you, my employers, that if I don't like what's going on, this is a there is a problem in healthcare. I mean, it's, let's not ignore the fact that we have issues to deal with in healthcare. But if I don't like what's going on, I feel I owe it to you to just put up an alternative. So my alternative is not going to go to the floor. I can't even get it up for a vote. But I still feel duty bound to offer an alternative. Now, if this thing, if this bill that's moving through, if this bill, you know, doesn't pass, then hopefully we'll get to talking about alternatives. Right now, though, this bill is on a fast track. I mean, they're now talking about greasing this thing to the Senate through a new procedure we call reconciliation. That's inside baseball talk for fast tracking, no filibusters, no more than 35 hours debate on this bill. So. I'm very concerned that right now the process is stacked to have no bipartisanship, no collaboration, and the only way to get there is to defeat this effort right here. Uh, the